Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us on this Sunday night. While enrollment in four-year colleges is on the decline, tech schools seem to be thriving. Yeah, Wisconsin's tech school enrollment this year is about 284,000 students statewide. And that's up 10% from last year. In this Project Education Report, Fox 11's Emily Matesic speaks with the system president about the success. Fox Valley Technical College is one of 16 schools in the Wisconsin Tech College system. As she wraps up her system-wide tour of excellence, System President Morna Foy marked her 11th stop with a visit to Fox Valley Tech's public safety training facility. This is just an amazing facility. The multi-million dollar facility, which hosted a Women in Public Safety event during Foy's visit, is just one aspect of the college that continues to see growth. Foy crediting the tech system founders and their belief of building schools that are embedded within the community they serve, a mindset that still rings true a century later. We also, um, you know, deliver programming that we know there's a job um, in the area uh, for our graduates. So that, that's really the foundation to uh, most of our programming decisions. Because the community needs are continuously changing, the tech colleges need to be flexible too. That flexibility allows the school to not only meet the needs of local employers, but also the needs of students who now more than ever want to say in their education. Our program offerings don't stay stuck. We are not offering the same things that we offered 100 years ago, and we are not offering the same things we offered 10 years ago. Um, and that is because when we don't have student interest, we don't have job opportunities at the end of a normal, even if we, we love that program, even if it's a, a program that was, you know, an industry that was long-lived and really important up here for many decades, if it's not right now, we're not going to continue to offer that and continue to make the expense of doing so. Thanks to community support and state funding, the tech college system remains an affordable option for students, making it attractive for those exploring careers or those looking to expand their education. While financially stable, Foy says the system could always use more funding as it's already stretching resources while exceeding demand. We want to do more dual enrollment, most of which is completely provided free of charge to high schools and to families. Um, we want to do more uh, customized training or work-based situated trainings, which means faculty going out into business and industry. Um, we want to do more of this kind of uh, training for our local law enforcement agencies um, and there's just a, a limit to our capacity um, without new investments. In the Fox Valley, Emily Matesic, Fox 11 News. Okay, I know you're not calling this your farewell tour, no, but talk I a little bit about what you're doing here today. I am on a tour of excellence of the technical colleges, so that means all 16 around the state. I asked them to pick a few things um, that they're especially proud of or that they think they do exceptionally well. It's been fascinating to see the different things that um, colleges uh, select. This is uh, college number 11 now, so um, I'm, I'm on the, the final lap. Um, but as you can see around you, uh, this is just an amazing facility and it's been really exciting. I'm, I'm in a bit here. I'm going to have a chance to meet some of their students and just find out how difficult it is to become a um, quality professional here in the public service field. That's why we're talking to you now before you get all sweaty and messy, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, and humbled and <laughs> feel bad because I can't make it work. Yeah, right. thank you very much. Just I appreciate that. Talk about the, why the tech system here in Wisconsin seems to be so successful in a, in a climate where we're seeing wow. schools that aren't, you know. that. You know, I, I, I attribute a, a lot of it, frankly, to the design of our founders and the way that they um, built the, the colleges to to really be embedded with their communities and to uh, take a partnership approach to everything that they do. Um, so we don't um, make decisions even about a facility as amazing as this in isolation. Um, it's something that the community um, was supportive of, both financially and in just, you know, enthusiasm and contributions and donations. Um, and we also, um, you know, deliver programming that we know there's a job. Um, in the area uh, for our graduates. So that, that's really the foundation to uh, most of our programming decisions. As advisory um, committees of employers have told us, we need uh, 
you know, quality talent. We need folks who have these specific skill sets and these, uh, this specific knowledge, and we will definitely um, employ them when they, when they graduate. And so we can make that promise to our students. Um, we also have just amazing faculty and staff. Um, all of our technical college faculty are required to have actually worked in the industry in which they provide teaching. So, I mean, imagine as a student, you can be confident that the person you're learning from has actually supported themselves and their families doing this work. Um, and they've actually been, um, you know, tested uh, by the realities of the real world. And it's a, it's a great experience for students. Um, and I, I think, lastly, again, is just that partnerships. Um, every technical college builds partnerships with their local public officials and with their local employers. And that makes a huge difference in our ability to do things like I mean, how many um, places do you know that you can actually get a, a real-life law enforcement experience on an airplane? Not many. Um, we could never have um, made that opportunity available if we were just trying to do it on our own, um, certainly not with a t public funding. Um, so that was a donation um, from FedEx. And, um, you know, it's an it's a experience that really attracts uh, law enforcement folks from around the country because it's so unique. Um, you know, you from across the country. I mean, it's not like, you know, you go to a, a college, normal college <laughs> or university, right, a four-year school. There is it because they're bringing in all that outside programming that helps them. Well, actually, they this this facility is unique in the in the in the number of uh, the way it attracts. Just because there aren't many places in the country where you can combine all these different public safety. Um, professions at once and it's a big important it's an important part of how they do their work in the real world is they serve different services work together um, but most of the training that happens here is actually for folks who live in this area so um, the you know attracting from from outside is is nice but technical colleges are really um, laser focused on preparing folks who will find employment right here in the Fox Valley um, and I, I think that that's why you see our programs change from year to year and change over because as industries evolve and some industries fade away and others do emerge, um, we adjust our programming appropriately. And we're able to do it in a flexible way so that folks can, say somebody um, gets a credential from us 10 years ago or even we're at a four-year institution, or maybe they graduated from a high school for 10 years ago and, and went straight to work. They can come back now um, and upskill in the same field that they were in. They can uh, maybe build upon the career they've been in, but now are doing something slightly different that requires a new credential. Um, so we have lots of different start and stop points and a lot of different um, types of credentials, and I think that that helps us um, serve our communities throughout their career lifespans, not at just one point in time. Yeah, because, I mean, where did the shift happen? Because they're always hammered in for years and years and years. Go to a four-year college. Go to a four-year college. And <laughs> there, there's been a shift, it seems like. I th these technical <coughs> colleges are really... I think there's been uh, a growing awareness, and people talk about us a lot more. And we, we have, um, you know, spent more effort trying to um, get the word out about the opportunities that we have available. But, honestly... Tech colleges in Wisconsin have been around for over a century, and we have, throughout that time, um, focused on community needs. So as the Fox Valley has changed and evolved and the industries here have evolved, um, so has Fox Valley. Um, they've gotten um, more complex programs in some ways. Technology obviously changed a lot of things. And I think also um, students are different, and that... That is a, you can't just say, well, that happened in 2016, you know, or that's happened when, when Chris Matheny became president here at, at Fox Valley. It's actually been um, something that I've witnessed in my own 20-something uh, kids that over time and then with the pandemic, um, it put a new sense of urgency and it also, I think, a new sense of, um, I want to be more involved in my own educational decision making. So whether you're 16 or you're 26 or 46, um, this idea that this is because this is what I've been doing or this is what my parents told me I should do or my, my um, you know, community, um, do I really want to do that? And if, if not, 
what do I want to do and how do I want to do it. There's so many ways students can go to learn new things online. They can learn new things on their phone. Uh, my son figured out how to install his car stereo by looking at YouTube. So, how, you know, being educators, we have to we have to respond to that. We have to change. Um, and tech colleges are in a great um, place to be that kind of responsive, student-focused, student-driven um, educational providers because, again, our, our history of, of keeping up with changes in industry, um, our history of, of educating folks who the traditional pathways at the time, back at the turn of the century, and I mean the previous century, um, you know, the, the, not everybody had an opportunity to go to a four-year, and in fact, very few of us did. So what are we going to do with, with everyone else? And what are all these other professions going to do that cannot wait four to five years to get a next, the next group of, um, of skilled talent? So, um, you know, we've been doing this work for a long, long time, but I think the, the economy and also students themselves now have have come, we've come together in a, in a sort of a perfect um, moment to take advantage of the flexibility um, of technical colleges and the sort of creativity of our, of our faculty to adjust and to change. And the student, I mean, you'd say it's not necessarily that traditional route that, that you know, young adults are taking. You, you might have a 50-year-old student. Is that, do yes. you feel like the, the average student age is skewing higher and higher as people are? Um, actually, you know, people, people don't always realize this, but it's typically um, in tech colleges for a long, long time, 28 to 32 has been our average age. So we had a lot of folks who were um, coming to us mid-career or to start a career after doing something that didn't require any um, college credential. And I, I think that is one thing that has definitely changed is that now almost everything you can do in life um, that can provide uh, you know, a, a family-supporting job requires something after high school. Um, and, and more and more high school students are even realizing that because they're getting a, a jump start on their college um, or post-secondary, whatever, youth apprenticeship, um, you know, getting associate degrees, getting a certification, a CNA, before they even graduate high school so that they can continue to, to accelerate that learning. But we have um, a growing number of students who are coming to us at a younger age because they are making choices about how much this is going to cost me, how long is this going to take me. Um, maybe I'm not 100% uh, certain that this is something I want to do for long term, but I want to I try out the industry. Um, so I'll, I'll go with the, the two-year associate degree route, and then I'll make a decision later. We also, frankly, have an ever-increasing number of folks who already have um, bachelor's degrees or even graduate degrees saying, you know, I want to get a special certification. I want to, um, you know, the pandemic was life-changing for lots of us, and there are many folks who um, just want to, do something different um, with their with themselves, or their life situation has changed. I have to care for for aging parents now, or now my kids are, are aren't little anymore. I don't need to have as much time to be at home with them. I can spend more time working or investing in myself. So we really get the whole spectrum. I think um, if you guys have a chance to talk to any of the students here, that's always a question I like to ask them about. What's it like being in I, I call the multi generational educational experience. Um, it's really different than when everybody is your age, you know, going through the same exact things. Um, and almost always students are just, uh, you know, it's, it's awesome. I learn from them. They learn from me. It makes me feel, older students say I feel energized and, you know, I love hanging around younger folks. Um, younger folks say, you know, they have so much experience about Maybe, maybe we're at the same place in our career, but they have life experience that I don't have, and they, they treat me like a colleague and a peer, and that's a great um, experience for me as well. Do you continue to make it so affordable? <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, <laughs> you well, might think of kids because they come here because it is affordable. And it, it is affordable, and it's, um, honestly, it's, it's partnerships. I mean, we are a partnership in the public sphere because of our local, uh, support from local uh, property taxpayers. I mean, this facility uh, was in large part paid for through a, a public referendum. So taxpayers saying, 
yes, we are willing, yes, we agree to this. Um, and that's really the only way we can and do any kind of significant taxing change is if, if taxpayers agree. So, you know, that's a, a great um, show of support from the community and makes us know that we're on the right track. We're not just, you know, imagining that this is going to have value and interest right here in the Fox Valley. Um, and then, of course, the state contributes. So we, ha we do have that public partnership, but truthfully, um, without the support of our local partners, um, equipment donations, um, reduced price equipment, um, contracts with um, service providers and partners to, to provide supports for our students in, in health care and uh, mental health services. You know, we use student um, peer tutoring and when those, we get those opportunities, but it's, it's just a balancing act. We are open access institutions, so that means um, we are designed for to give everybody an opportunity and in order for that to be real it has to be affordable so we just have to find ways to um, prioritize and, and that's also it, it does drive this idea that our program offerings don't stay stuck we are not offering the same things that we offered 100 years ago and we are not offering the same things we offered 10 years ago um, and that is because when we don't have student interest, we don't have job opportunities at the end of a normal, even if we, we love that program, even if it's a, a program that was, you know, an industry that was long-lived and really important up here for many decades, if it's not right now, we're not going to continue to offer that and continue to make the expense of doing so. Um, we're going to change it up and put our resources where they're most needed. How do you, is the financial, the system obviously is financially stable right now. Do oh, you, yeah. Yes. Is there concern that, I feel like, because we're here with the play, if it, is it, is there, how do you prevent it from crashing and burning moving forward? I guess my well, terrible metaphor is with the, you know, yeah. but, but honestly, I, you know, the bubble um, bursting, I, you know. Just like, uh, just like all of us, uh, you know, at home, you know, we are, we have to make decisions. We have to prioritize. We have to evolve. Like, like I just said, we have to um, discontinue programs that are no longer relevant or no longer needed. Um, our faculty are, um, you know, they stay in touch with their industry and a lot of different ways of doing that. But so they, they often kind of can foresee um, where is this industry going? How do I and how does the college help me keep up and keep my skills so that I can pivot my program? Um, and so we're, we're constantly making those judgments. I think for us right now, the biggest financial issue is that the demand for technical college services, both from students and from employers in the area, is, is like on a, this trajectory. And it's not that we are going to suddenly stop doing where we're at, but getting so that we can actually um, respond to that demand, we need more investment. And it's tough because we're say, well, you know, uh, you're not, the world isn't falling, the sky isn't falling, and the, you know, the campus isn't going to close. So do you really need more resources? And the answer to that is, if you want us to do our job, which is to provide the talent and the workforce for this area, then yes, we need more resources because the demand exceeds what we can do. Um, faculty are, are um, you know, <laughs> most of our faculty, because they do have, um, you know, work experience, they could be out in the workforce um, and, you know, making more money, frankly, than, than a public institution can um, can we can't afford that but um, our students you know trying to keep them here in class getting their credentials when they could be out and and then so many employers are like you know I'll just take them right now so we have to work with those employers to make sure that um, students can work and go to school at the same time um, we do a lot of things to stretch our resources as far as we can but the demand still exceeds what we can do. So um, it's kind of, I guess it's a, it's a good place to be um, in that we, we are needed and wanted, um, but it does put some new resource pressures on the tech colleges because, um, you know, it, it's really difficult. It's one of those things like your reward for doing good work 
is more work. And that's kind of how I think some of the colleges feel right now. They just want to do more dual enrollment, most of which is completely provided free of charge to high schools and to families. Um, we want to do more uh, customized training or work-based situated trainings, which means faculty going out into business and industry. Um, we want to do more of this kind of uh, training for our local law enforcement agencies. Um, and there's just a limit to our capacity um, without new investment. So that's kind of, kind of gets stuck. We don't want to be saying no. We want to be saying yes. And, and that's where we're, our, our um, challenge is right now.